I am Deputy Whitlinger from the Sheboygan County Sheriff's Department. I'm here as a member of the Sheboygan County SWAT team. Go over some of the things that we have here at the uh, safety fair this year. What we have here is a body bunker, which is detachable. We have it attached to our wheelbase though, and we use this for when we're doing uh, institution clearing, such as a hospital or a school. We're able to stack up team behind that and push it down the, uh, the hallway. Over here we have another shield. This is a portable shield or a man carry shield where one person can carry that and then have their other hand free for their weapon, like that. We use that one for house entries. Up here we have one of our uh, breaching devices inside of its sheath. We use this one for opening doors. It's got uh, different apparatuses, different shapes on each end for wedging doors open. Also down here on the floor is our battering ram. Also utilized for opening doors. That weighs about 35 pounds dead weight and it delivers kinetic energy of about 2200 pounds per square inch if properly swung and done. Over here is some more of the uh, protective equipment that uh, members of the SWAT team wear. This is a vest. Each member of the SWAT team is assigned a vest. Yeah, bulletproof. It is. The uh, vest is bulletproof to the same rating as our shields, which is a uh, level uh, 3A, which will stop uh, handgun rounds. Same as the, uh, the helmet up here. Also a 3A level protection. Moving on, here's some of the uh, firearms that are issued to the Sheriff's Department uh, SWAT members. This is a UMP, which stands for Universal Machine Pistol. It shoots a 45 caliber round. It's on safe now, as you can see, there's nothing in there, but it shoots up to one round, does a burst, or it can go full auto. Over here we have an AR, which uh, shoots a 223 round, or a 5.56 in military lingo. Also does uh, burst or full auto. Up here we have a less lethal shotgun that we use for beanbag rounds or different types of munitions other than your traditional shotgun rounds. And then over here we have the 40 millimeter launcher which would, can be used for delivering either gas into a house or for using uh, less lethal munitions such as beanbag rounds or in, uh, exact impound uh, munitions or things to that effect. And over here is our assistant team leader, Corporal Spence. Here you go, Matt. Good morning. How long have you been on the team for, Matt? You're such a great guy. I've been on the team for about four years now, three years. How long have you been with the Sheriff's Department? I've been with the Sheriff's Department for about nine years now. And what is your role as uh, the team leader, or assistant team leader for uh, Sheriff's Department? How is that uh, arranged? I'm one of the assistant team leaders. Uh, the other one is uh, Deputy Tross. Uh, in his absence, I'll help out with uh, executing the operation plan for the team depending upon uh, what environment we're working in. How many people are on the uh, Sheboygan County SWAT team? We have 16 members on the SWAT team. Where we have members comprised from uh, Kohler Police Department, uh, Plymouth Police Department, Elk Car Lake Police Department, and Wisconsin State Patrol. So we're a multi-jurisdictional team. We're also uh, looking at trying to expand our medical component of the team as well uh, with some private practice individuals. My name is Ginger of the Town of Wilson First Responders. And we are here at the Crime Stoppers to uh, promote our unit and let people know that we are available out in the town of Wilson. What we do is we accompany the Orange Cross when they page out 911. We are also paged. We hope to get there before we do so that we can start care and cut down the time span between the page and when the ambulance actually gets there. If someone goes into cardiac arrest, five minutes is a key number. Some of the equipment that we have is an AED, which is to check and shock someone if they have an appropriate rhythm to be shocked for. Uh, we have oxygen on board that we can give people. We have pocket masks. We have um, an oxygen pulse ox it's called. It monitors the level of oxygen in your, in your body. Um, we have a trauma kit so that if someone is hurt and bleeding 
that type of thing is all included in this bag. Um, over there we have a mannequin that we can practice CPR on. We also have an interchangeable head that we can put a combi tube into somebody if they are unconscious and need better oxygen and better ventilation to do to accompany the CPR. Um, these are the pediatric size uh, pads for the AED. Again, we are out there to promote and assist our community and be there when we need us. Okay, what we are demonstrating now is CCR, which is a, cla a witnessed cardiac arrest. If there is any indication of trauma, it cannot be done, and it cannot be done on children. Um, what we would also have is 100 beats per minute. That's the number of compressions per minute. You go for three cycles of 200 before you give any breaths. The idea is to keep the blood flowing because the blood already has some oxygen contained in it. And every time the hands come off the chest, they are inhaling more oxygen. It's a way of hopefully preventing any kind of brain damage. And this will continue until a ambulance driver will um, contact the emergency room and decide whether it should be continued or discontinued. Hi, my name is Quinn Sieber. I'm a state trooper with the Wisconsin State Patrol. I'm here at the fair today to talk about vehicle theft, fraud, also vehicle uh, safety inspection, and uh, anything basically that would have to do with vehicle identification and uh, the inspection of vehicles. I'm your regional inspector for the State Patrol. I cover all of northeast Wisconsin, uh, just basically north of Milwaukee up to the Marinette border. What we have here today are just a couple of motorcycle frames or tainted parts, obviously a chop frame. We have a frame here and I brought some items that obviously kids could look at and see obvious circumstance. Numbers been removed, it's a Harley Davidson frames. We also have a couple of necks of motorcycles. Uh, basically the numbers on those had also been removed and re-stamped. Also brought an airbag in case somebody wanted to look at one of those that's been removed from the vehicle. But uh, work 40 hours a week primarily and this is what I do full time. I'm the only trooper in the state, at least at this time, that does vehicle inspection all the time, in addition to my regular duties. But uh, primarily, that's what I'm here for, is to answer questions, anything at all regarding vehicle theft, fraud, identification issues, and inspection. I'm Tim Ellis with the uh, Sheboygan County Fire Investigation Unit. Uh, we're a volunteer organization uh, consisting of uh, various volunteer fire departments, uh, and a couple of the, from the city fire department. Our goal is to uh, investigate fires, whether they're suspicious or not. The uh, fire departments are required by law to find out how, how a fire is, has uh, started. And uh, it's up to them to call us into scene to see if uh, we can uh, determine what the cause and origin of the fire is. So we, uh, like I said, we're, we're a volunteer organization, although we got the uh, the trailer and all these tools as a uh, part of a, a grant from FEMA to get us started. Uh, we uh, average uh, this year we were up to, to 24 calls and this is uh, the end of September so we're, we keep quite busy. Hi we're from LTC we are here today at the safety fair and we are presenting our program the criminal justice some of the things that we get to do is we get to work with firearms. We also do some tasering events. Um, we work with SFSTs, who are people who have been drinking. Uh, we know what to look for. Um, does anybody else want to talk a little bit about LTC? Go ahead. Uh, we also have opportunities to do internships with the local police departments. Um, we do lots of hands-on tacticals to learn professional ways to protect ourselves. Um, right? 
Uh, my name is Brian Hubelink. I'm a student here at LTC also. Um, as you can see, we have a lot of uh, different equipment here. Um, as far as the uh, training guns, um, some of the batons, um, the pepper sprays, and uh, some of the SFST stuff that we use. Uh, um, <laughs> as far as our, our stop sticks, uh, bringing those out, I don't know if we're going to be doing a demonstration on those later on or not, but uh, uh, those are some of the things that we use around here, some of the things that we're going to be uh, trained to use. So. Thank you. I'm Tammy. I'm also a student at LTC. Um, as we're here today, a lot of the things we get to do are volunteer with the community and get out there and let people know what we do at LTC. It also gives us an opportunity to work with a lot of the local police departments and get some experience and get our volunteer hours out there and work with the communities. Hi, my name is Emily and I'm a volunteer of MAD, Mothers Against Drunk Driving. MAD's mission is to prevent underage drinking, um, to get the information out there for victims and survivors. Um, MAD does not have to be a mother. It can be a father, it can be a brother, it can be a sister, it can be anybody. Um, MAD just um, is in Wisconsin in every state. We have victim advocates that are here to help victims after a crash. Um, so if you know anybody who wants to volunteer, you can call MAD. There's a website and come on down to the safety fair. Hi, I'm Julie and I'm with Great Lakes Search and Rescue Canine. We are a nonprofit organization in the state of Wisconsin and we provide specially trained dogs and handlers to assist agencies in locating missing people. We're the dogs that come out if somebody's lost, if a child runs away from home, if an elderly person gets confused and wanders away. We also work with drownings or body recovery, so sheriff's departments, police departments, fire departments can call us. We don't charge for our services, we're volunteers, and we bring dogs out to try to help people find lost people, agencies find lost people. This is my dog Hawkeye. Hawkeye is a two-year-old Belgian Malinois. Hawkeye, pay attention buddy, he does uh, tracking and cadaver recovery or human remains detection and he is he's been my good partner now for the last two years even though he's refusing to look at the camera hawk come here there you go that's hawkeye and uh sitting over here we have his full sister she's a young dog named scout she's um not even a year old yet and she's training for human remains detection with her handler grace and they come from manitowoc county and work on our team and we're just two of the handlers of great lakes search and rescue canine this is officer ensley of the sheboygan police department street crimes unit we're here at the uh, safety fair we work uh, gang and narcotics uh, today we brought some stuff to show the kids um, some safe cans. Officer Ensley will show you some of the things that we have found narcotics in recently. Um, I guess our goal here is to show different ways that people are creative and conceal narcotics and also uh, explain to the kids about different things with gangs. This is Bill Smith from Plymouth Safe and Lock, and uh, I'd like to show you some of our goodies we got at the uh, uh, fair this year. Uh, we got a video recorder. This isn't hooked up right now. We've got the different systems for uh, closed circuit television, and here's a little novel thing too. You can set uh, around and nobody even knows it's a camera. That's very interesting. We've got the uh, doorbell. Somebody rings the doorbell at your house. Then the uh, monitor goes on. You can see who's at the door. You can talk to them. The other part is over on the other side there. Uh, this is an automatic 
push button lock. This is where the businesses are using these. This is the one with the cards, electronic cards. And it's also got the push button and it's an override key. And we got some of our different uh, deadbolts. You don't have to get into the same old deadbolt all the time. We do have the decorative ones. And they're, they're all very functionable. We've got the uh, home type security. It's a very inexpensive push button lock. We've got them that's a little more fancier for the fancier places. Here's something you got a little interesting. I've had this proclamation. This is for the crime prevention. I've had this proclamation for the last 15 years now. And this is the new one from Scott Walker. And some of the new things that's out. We got a lot of safes. I didn't bring the big ones naturally because I can't lift them. These are bad enough to lift, but we do have all the uh, safes from big ones to little ones. And this is a computer safe. This is the one the college kids like because they can put their computer stuff in it. And anything else they want. And we've been. Uh, with the crime fighters now for years, and we continue to be for years, and I'm associated with this International Association of Locksmiths. It's called ALOA, and I'm on the board of directors, and I think it's the finest organization in the world. So. What we got here is we're gonna, the City of Falls, Town of Falls, and Cedar Hill Fire Department combined to make a technical rescue team where we do a, uh, various amounts of rope rescue, water rescue, uh, anything out of the scope of what firefighters generally do or taught. We're going to show just a little demonstration of how we would take a patient down that would be on an elevated surface, whether it be a silo, a rooftop. Granted, we are doing it at the ground, but use your imagination. So, here we go. start to vomit, you tilt them so that they can clear their airway. That's breaks. Hi, 
Hi, I'm Liz Obler and I'm from Healthy Sheboygan County 2020. We have our prescription drug awareness booth here from our AODA committee and that's part of Healthy Wisconsin 2020. Our goal is to educate the public about prevention to prevent youth and adults from misusing prescription drugs and also we do alcohol awareness programs. Today we have how alcohol affects brain development in adolescence and we have um, installed medication drug boxes in Sheboygan County at two police stations, at the Sheboygan Police Station and at the Plymouth Police Station where the public can bring medications at any time and dispose of them appropriately. We also are having one installed in Sheboygan Falls in the police station shortly. We also have bags that are available that people can take their old and used, unused prescriptions and get rid of them so that their home is safer for them and their children and they can mail those in free of charge. If they have any questions, they can call the Family Resource Center or they can call the Sheboygan County Public Health Department. i Todd Preby and during the Crime Prevention Fair for 2011, the Sheriff's Department's focus is going to be on surveys and finding out what the concerns of citizens in the rural area that are patrolled by the Sheriff's Department. And the survey is going to help us steer our efforts, our problem solving efforts, our community policing efforts into those areas that really need it. Uh, so we're going to prioritize what we're going to do as patrol functions and criminal investigation function, functions. And uh, I also have a, a letter here that will explain to the, to the citizens of, of uh, Sheboygan County just the direction that the Sheriff's Department is heading. This will also be sent to the townships and put into the township newsletters. Uh, the, survey, the survey is a, actually a two-page survey. We started doing these out at the Sheboygan County Fair and we're going to continue to do those so we have a very good idea of what the concerns are throughout the county. Uh, we also have here on display, if people are interested, of the Sheriff's Department's implementation plan of the township officer. Every township has been assigned a township officer who will be the go-to person for partnership building and for problem identification and, and solving. So a lot of, uh, a lot of changes happening. Uh, it will be much more, uh, I guess it will be tailored policing is what citizens of Sheboygan County can expect and we're getting things going. I'm very excited about it and this is a good opportunity here during the Crime Prevention Fair to spread the word on uh, what the Sheriff's Department is um, in the, I guess, in the process of doing. So thank you very much and uh, we'll see you next year. Well, good morning. My name is John Wagner. I'm with the United States Coast Guard Auxiliary uh, Station Sheboygan. And we're here at the uh, Sheboygan Falls uh, Safety Day with Coasty here. Uh, Coasty, what are we doing here today? We're talking to boys and girls about water safety and boating safety. And what's one of the most important things about water and boating safety? You what? always wear your life jacket, because life jackets float and you don't. That's very good, Coasty. And that's one of the big things we're doing out here today, is promoting uh, the use of life jackets and also water safety. It's also good to be safe around the water too, isn't it, Coasty? And Coasty, do you have anything else to say? Oh, I've got something else about life jackets. What do you have to say about life jackets, Coasty? Don't just pack it, wear your life jacket. That's very good advice, Coasty. Coasty, would you like to talk to this young man over here? Hi there, young man. Basketball 14. Can you come talk to Coasty? Would you like to talk to Coasty? Come on. Come, will you come tell Coasty your name, please? What's your name? Ryan? Come on Ryan. over, Ryan. Hi there, Ryan. This is Coasty, the rescue boat. How old are you, Ryan? Hi. Hey Ryan, do you like to ride on a boat? Have you ever been on a boat, Ryan? Yes, you've been on a boat? 
Very good, right? I like to hear that. Is that your mom behind you? Does mom always wear her life jacket? She always does too? I like to hear that. We'll make we'll make mom a life jacket safety leader too. Thank you. Now Ryan, as a life jacket safety leader, you have to help the Coast Guard Auxiliary out. And you know how you can do that? Always remind everybody on the boat to wear their life jacket. You have a good day. And thank you. So let's say, but you'll see the electricity go back and forth between the two probes on the taser. So you can turn it off. Now that taser in a law enforcement taser will actually run for five seconds and then cycle and stop. Then the officer will give continued commands. If that party listens, then they stop using the taser at that point. If the subject's not listening and starts to get up to fight again, we're able to use the taser again by pulling the trigger again. If they continue to uh, be uh, uncooperative and resistive, then we can actually hold that trigger and taser will go as long as that battery will last, which can be a long time. We generally don't like to tase for very long time periods, uh, but it's not that harmful if we have to to control the individual. The other really cool thing about taser is that with concealed carry, uh, coming uh, of age November 1st, uh, Taser is one of the devices that's listed now for citizens to carry. I don't have a citizen Taser with me, but the biggest difference is that Taser is one where you put the Taser and engage it into the subject. Once that subject gets hit, it goes for 30 seconds. You get to drop the Taser and run to safety while they're on the ground locked up in this uh, configuration mu uh, muscle lockup uh, until that 30 seconds is done. So that gives you that 30 second head start. So next we're going to shoot the taser into our bad guy target here and we'll show you what that looks like. Go ahead and load the taser. You want me to load it? Yep. Good. Turn the taser on. And when you're ready, you can yell commands. Now the taser is going, and the taser is going to run that electrical circuit through the body. Now, they do say it's 50,000 volts the taser initially starts with when it sends out of the gun. Unfortunately, uh, a lot of that uh, power is lost on the way to the body. So what happens is, uh, there's really only about 7,000 volts that actually go through the body. So that 50,000, only, the only voltage that's going to go through is about 7,000. Now, voltage isn't dangerous. So voltage isn't what's dangerous in electricity, it's the amperage that's dangerous. The amperage in this taser is less than a Christmas tree light bulb. So uh, it's nothing that anybody's gonna get hurt with. So when we talk about the, the electricity that's going through the, the, uh, the individual as that circuit's completed, there's nothing here that's dangerous to the heart, to pacemakers, none of that will cause any issues uh, with the individual. So now we're gonna take this off. Let's go ahead and pull the wires out. So we're going to do one more quick demonstration for that. This time you're going to see what happens when we can pull the taser more than once and actually it will activate. We'll charge, we'll actually send those taser probes off. Ryan's going to shoot this one. Okay, then I'll let you load it. <laughs> ah. Touch on the side. You should click right on. You're good. Good? Yep. Good. Okay. okay, so you notice there's a little red light that goes on. We call that painting the target. We have found that lasers are a really cool thing to put on people because sometimes all they need is to see that little red dot and they know something bad's going to happen. So they stop and they cooperate. So we call that painting the target. Now that Taser's been out a while and people understand how effective it is, a lot of times all we have to do is put the red dot on them and they go from fighting and resistive behavior to cooperative behavior. So right now we're going to see a second demo of the live target taser target. Stop, please! Get down! I will tase you! Stop! Get down! Good. Now, if that individual went down to the ground, and I assume he would here with the target hit that we have, and he starts to get back up, the officer has the opportunity to pull the trigger again. So he's going to yell the command, stay down, stay down, and when he doesn't, he's going to pull the trigger again. He's got the opportunity to get that uh, muscle lockup again.
Sit down, sit down, stop resisting! And that five second cycle seems like a long time when you're going through it, but uh, it's really not that long overall. All right, good, you can command the person's in a fighting position and they're uh, threatening to fight. So, go ahead, please, around. So, you give the commands. Get down to the ground! Get down! Get down or he's gonna tase you! Get down! Good. Good. That causes the lockup. Now this is being stimulated. He's not really being, being shy. Trust me, you hear a little, ah! Or something like that. So, now he's starting to get back Get up. back down! Get down! And as soon as they give him that, then again, he gets that body locked up, and he goes back down. Now if he starts to get back up again, same thing's gonna happen. Cup under power. He just yelled, hand cup under power. That lets the wrist know. Let's the players. That takes you going. And keep that person locked up so you can't hurt the officers coming in to make the arrest. Watch the wires. Yep. The only thing we really have to have concerns about here is to make sure the officers can't stay away from the area in between those clothes. If they touch in there, that's a hot spot. They'll be in shock. Crime Stoppers, uh, safety fair. Um, I've been doing this for a couple of years, as far as with the fire department volunteer. And uh, this year we're going to do a, a, a demonstration uh, with a sprinkler demo demonstration and a flashover. How many of you kids out there can tell me that uh, you, you've seen the Survival Life House that have been in it? Can you raise your hand? How many of you guys have been in the Survival Life House? There we go. Well, in the Survival Life House, we talk about uh, fire safety and, and what happens when there's smoke and there's pretend smoke. Well, today we're going to show you what happens with real smoke and uh, how hot it is and how important it is to have working um, uh, smoke detectors and uh, how beneficial a sprinkler system is in your house. Um, when, a, when, a, when a fire occurs and it starts on, it starts on fire, a fire doubles in size every 30 seconds. Well, that didn't take very long for that to happen. How many times have mom, mom and dad been cooking this has happened? It's happened in my house. Now just think this is going off and you're in your rooms, you want to find the quickest way to get out. See how, see how black is starting to go? You're not going to be able to see in that. Oh, and there goes our sprinkler system. One good thing about sprinklers is that it reacts quickly to the fire. It's easier, it's easier and safer for you. It actually causes less damage, way less damage, uh, other than your, fire, your house burning down. You, uh, the, the, the sprinkler system uses very little water, and uh, system, the, the systems are very from all different types. You can get them in, uh, in, uh, in uh, cities or out in the rural area too. Once again, not very long for that smoke detector to go off. See how black that is and how it's soot? Now that's why you guys gotta stay low to the ground when you're in there, because all that heat and smoke is up high. And because this side is open, the smoke can get out, but when, when, the, when the room is closed or inside of a house, that smoke fills up really fast, so you gotta stay down and get low. And when it's this smoky, you won't be able to see that. That's why you got to talk to your parents about escape routes. So what's your time like doing up there? Yeah, 
guys, is it pretty close to rollover? Or? No. There we go. Flames are climbing up the walls. Yep, there, she's starting to roll over across the ceiling. Why don't we put her out? Wow. Go And again, it's, uh, this shows you how hot a fire can get in such a short period of time. Um, it's like it doubles the size every, uh, every 30 seconds. Even as, even as fire fires, when you put water on, you see all that steam coming out? Well, the expansion rate of that water is really fast, and that's why we got to wear a protective gear, always we be fine too. The sprinkler demo is uh, put together by the Sprinkler Association, and uh, one of their members is here, uh, Kathy. And um, she. Now I just got a question over here. I'm a member of the county fire investigation unit. We're all here too. He wants to know if uh, you want. We should. Have Good afternoon. I'm Deputy Weber with the Sheboygan County Sheriff's Department. I'm going to go over the uh, squad with you. This is a typical Sheriff's Department squad. It's a, Crown, a Ford Crown Victoria. This is squad 27. This is a squad that I drive. Um, it's outfitted as most squads are. Obviously on the top you have the red and blue lights. There's also, you hear a siren. That's not from this squad, but this squad is equipped with a siren. That's uh, red and blue lights and siren are used to go to emergency calls and are uh, engaged when you are responding to those things. Inside the squad you'll see a uh, radio uh, mounted on the front dash. You'll see a computer, a laptop, which is a commercial grade or uh, industrial strength uh, computer. It gets put through a lot of use. Um, you'll see a rifle mounted in between the seats, which is an AR-15, 223 caliber. Uh, control functions for the lights and the sirens in between the seats. Um, in the, there's not anything kept in the rear seats, as that's normally where people are, are placed. Um, also that you can't see that are stuck up in the back here. On the sides is we have PBT unit in there. We have uh, a waist restraint belt, binoculars also in the front. If you want to go over the trunk, I can go over that with you as well. If you open the trunk, we have a multitude of things in the trunk. Shovel, cones, We have, this is an evidence kit that's kept in here for collecting evidence. These are road spikes. They're called stingers. These are deployed to stop a car that won't stop for us. All these little, under these little rubber heads are kind of like punji sticks or hollow. Those are kept in here. flares, some bags and medical equipment and there's an AED in here as well. When somebody's heart stops, we can use this life pack AED which we obtained uh, these units about five years ago. Also in the back there's something I forgot which is in the front which is a uh, squad video camera. This is actually the base unit for it and it's under lock and key I cannot get at it or any other officer cannot it can only be accessed by supervision 
but the actual camera is mounted in the front of the squad, which looks out. I'm sure everyone's seen squad video before. So that's typically what's in the squad. As some other blankets and and some other miscellaneous things, but uh, that's the gist of what's in the back. So we're here today with the helicopter. Um, we were invited by fire and by the police department, I believe, or the sheriff's department for their um, safety presentation. And we're here to have the public take a look at our helicopter and what we do. Um, and basically, uh, fire or police uh, use us. And most of our calls from them are for motor vehicle crashes or any kind of trauma. So this is just our chance to come out and see the public and they get to see what our helicopter looks like. Where are you located? Uh, we're located over at the airport in Fond du Lac. That's where our hangar is. We're stationed over there. And we service this northern area. And we go down to as far as Milwaukee and, um, and further north up towards Green Bay. Um, let's see, we do about oh, over 300 and some uh, flights a year. Uh, we operate, we run 12 hour shifts. We operate seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Um, and we fly with a nurse, paramedic, and a pilot. And we do trauma calls, scene calls, and we do inner facility transports. Any other questions? That's it, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> See, I don't know how I could fit in that thing. It's a video camera on the other side. Um, this is a BK-117 helicopter. It's the Flight for Life aircraft. It's called Trauma 3 is our call sign and we fly out of Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. That's all you get from me. She's a two-year-old bloodhound. Um, we've been working with Great Lakes Search and Rescue for about a year and a half now, and Nobby tracks people. Uh, she also helps me at work for the, as a warden with the DNR, and main job is to find lost people. Okay. And she likes other dogs. That's what's just distracting her now. <laughs> Rescue? Nothing dramatic, no. Um, she's like I say, she's only been doing it for about a year and a half, and we just haven't had any uh, 
you know, high profile calls or anything like that. Thank you.